welcome to Zion Lutheran Church in Pasadena, Texas. With all our friends here or online, we welcome you in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our King. Holly, what's our opening song today? Well, good morning again. We're going to stand and we're going to sing, You Are My King.
as we gather in the name of our King, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pause for just a moment to begin our time of worship, to remember that He is King and we are not. But in the past days and weeks, we have acted as if we are Lord and King and boss of our lives. We have chosen not to serve, but to be served, to take from others instead of give, to put ourselves first, and as a result, so much brokenness and selfishness and loss. We grieve because of our sin and the sin of others, and so we begin this time of worship today, remembering how Jesus is our King and we need Him. Let's pause for a private moment with Him and then we'll sing our confession and faith together. Yes, our Lord Jesus came to be our king, but not to wear a cross of gold, but to wear a crown of thorns. Not to be served by others, but to serve and willingly lay his life down, even for those people who denied and betrayed him, like us. And thankfully, during this Lenten season, we remember that for us who do not deserve our Lord's grace and mercy, he came to go to the cross that we have deserved, to die the death we earned, and to rise on the third day to give us life in him. Because we serve a risen king, Jesus Christ our Savior, we are forgiven all our sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And God's children said, Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Jesus, the Son of Man, our Lord and King, as we get ever closer to Holy Week and Palm Sunday and the cross and Easter, we marvel at what it means to really lead by bowing low to serve. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for how you have bowed low to serve us, and 
We thank you for those who have lovingly served us as well. Give us humble hearts to put others first, that your will may be done and your kingdom come. Lord Jesus, have your way among us all. And all God's people said, please be seated. Good morning. Our first reading is from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. I will not make, I'm sorry, I will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. And at this time, we invite some of our younger students up for a special message with Pastor Brady. We like to do something a little fun. And our younger students, we invite you to bring something up in your hand. I don't know in advance what it is, but I'll try to choose. You'll pick one, and I'll try to relate that to God and faith together. And you get to vote by your applause which one you want me to talk about. So be merciful, please. All right. So what do we have here? Good morning, by the way. A hot sauce packet. Is this from Taco Bell? That is fantastic. All right. Hot sauce packet. Oh, and what do you have here? A magnifying glass. Love it. Good. Very good. And hello, I heard. Did you turn four? How, how old are you? Five? Yeah. yeah, you're so big. All right, what do you got here? Oh, my good. What is this? Lipstick? <laughs> Chapstick. Okay, nice. All right. A spatula. This is not a spatula. It says sweet swat. It's a fly swatter. Well, it can be a spatula today. How about that? All right. So, would you <laughs> we'll buy, show by your applause? Would you like me to talk about hot sauce? <laughs> Magnifying glass. <laughs> Chapstick. <laughs> spatula fly swatter. <laughs> All right. Very good. Mm, thank you. Let's see, I get to pick whatever one it is. <laughs> no? No. Uh, thanks a lot. All right. So apparently the group has chosen that this is a fly swatter. And I don't know about you, but we've had fly, we had a fly get into our house this week. Have you ever had a fly in your house? Man, it's so annoying, and you try to chase it down. Those flies are fast. Um, and do you know why flies sometimes get into your house? You leave the door open, and sometimes because there's something in the house that interests them. Um, for example, if you have food in the sink, or maybe a little stuff out that flies can, can nibble, right? If you leave food out or stuff like that, flies tend to be attracted to icky stuff, Right? And then it's hard, because once they get in, man, it's not good. Now, the Bible says, as, as young people, there can be things in our lives that can attract unhealthy things. And so we want to be careful about what we watch on TV, or about the kind of friends we play with, or the kind of video games we play. Some things are really good that help us grow and help us and our homes to be healthy, it is a fly swatter. Look at that. That's pretty good. Uh, uh, other things are not so healthy. And they're stinky and messy, and they attract the wrong 
kind of attention. In this Lenten season, in fact, adults too, we're asking God to make us aware of those things in our life that don't belong, that attract unhealthy things and can lead us into sin. And so we ask God in the season to show us those things that don't belong, that stink, and, and maybe bring things into our lives that don't belong. We thank Jesus for having mercy and kindness on us. He, um, he actually was punished for the things that we deserve, and the things in our life and the ick and the mistakes we make, Jesus took all of that onto the cross. He loved us enough to take all our filth and make our lives clean. So that's what we're thinking about, and we're praying about this Lenten season. We thank Jesus for forgiving our sins and making us clean, and we ask him to help swat the things in our lives that don't belong so that we can be more like him. And all God's children said, amen. You can head back to your seats and listen, actually, in our next reading, it talks about how can young people keep our way pure and clean? That's good advice for young ones and older children of God as well. Our second reading is from Psalm 119, 9 through 16. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips, I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in the following. I rejoice in following your statutes, as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The things we see tend to touch our hearts. The things we think about tend to shape our minds. And the things we say also tend to be the things that we keep saying and live by as well. That's why believers for the past 1,800 years have spoken in a variety of languages this summary of what we believe, known as the Apostles' Creed. Please stand as we speak it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our gospel reading for today is also the focus for today's message from Mark chapter 10. They were on their way up to Jerusalem, with Jesus leading the way. And the disciples were astonished, while those who followed were afraid. Again, he took the twelve aside and told them what was going to happen to him. We are going up to Jerusalem, he said, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him and spit on him flog him, and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. Then James and John, sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink, or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will drink the cup 
I drink, and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or my left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Holly, our next song is about being a servant, correct? Yes. yes. I look forward to hearing it. While we sing, I'm going to go serve you and wash my hands very carefully because I just handled fly swatter and I'm serving you communion later. But let's sing together. all God's people said. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And happy St. Patrick's Day. I see a lot of you are wearing green and those who didn't, don't worry, you're not going to get pinched here. We're a loving church. Uh, you might be wondering why do we celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Pastor Brady, are you that much into green beer? No, not at all. Actually, Patrick is one of the great heroes of the faith that I really admire. And I invite you to learn about the real St. Patrick, too. I think you will also. On March 7th of each year, it's the season for shamrocks, leprechauns, green beer, pinching people who forget to wear green. It's St. Patrick's Day. That's the day we celebrate the Irish saint who somehow convinced all the snakes in Ireland to pack their bags and move it to England. Except that no snakes ever lived in Ireland in the first place, so Patrick couldn't have sent them anywhere. And Patrick wasn't Irish at all, he was British, and no church has ever officially named Patrick a saint. So if St. Patty's Day isn't about an Irish saint with a knack for sending snakes to England, what are we celebrating on March 17th? Now the true story of Patrick begins in the 4th century. He was born about the time that Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire. His dad was a deacon, his granddad was a pastor. But Patrick had no interest in Christianity. But when he was 16, everything in his life suddenly changed. Irish pirates were raiding along the western coast of Britain and they took him as their prisoner. So Patrick ended up as a slave on a sheep ranch in Ireland. His slave master was a druid priest and a clan chieftain. 
During those years of slavery, God transformed his heart. Now, after six years of slavery, Patrick had a dream that he should try to escape, and he did. He fled to Britain, and he became a monk, and then 20 years after he escaped from Ireland, God called him to go back, proclaim the gospel to his former captors. Now, Patrick knew how the Irish people spoke. He knew how they thought. He knew how they ruled. So he spoke the gospel first to the chieftains of each clan. And one of the first people to embrace the message of Jesus was Milku, the man who for six years had been Patrick's slave master. Now, according to later tradition, he used the three-leaf shamrock to explain the Trinity to the Irish. Just as the shamrock is one single clover with three leaves, God is one God with three persons. Now, there's no clear evidence that this really happened, but the Irish did see the shamrock as a sacred symbol, so it's possible. So it seems that Patrick died on March 17th in the year 493. Not Irish, not a snake charmer, never officially named as a saint, but a simple servant of Jesus Christ who shared God's love with the very people who had once enslaved him. I don't know about you, but after watching that video, I had one question on my mind. What would possibly possess a runaway slave to go back to the very people who might re-enslave or even kill him? Well, the answer, of course, is that Jesus did the very same thing. And we heard about it today. And I invite you to consider slaves of all, what it might be to walk in the footsteps of Jesus and St. Patrick too. I found it really interesting that God designed St. Patrick's Day this year to fall one week right before Palm Sunday and Jesus' journey to the cross. It won't happen again in our lifetimes. And this one reading to pop up on St. Patrick's Day, these words maybe they echo in your heart. I know they echoed in St. Patrick's when he read them. Jesus' words to us today, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. Now Jesus is speaking these words about two days before the day we know as Palm Sunday. He's traveling down the Jordan River, and he's on his way to head up to Jerusalem for the Passover, as he's done so many times before, and this would be the last time for him. But it is a different journey. He is surrounded by a crowd of people at this time. He's just healed a man in Jericho of blindness, and everybody is excited and energized, but also stunned. You see, by this time, an arrest warrant had been issued for Jesus' capture, and they knew it. We read at the start of our gospel reading in Mark chapter 10 that the 12, his followers, were astonished. They knew this and saw Jesus leading the way, and the rest, 72 and more, they were afraid. Because when you follow Jesus going into that, there might be a chance that you might end up in the same place. And so it's in this state and in this moment that Jesus is boldly leading the way. What on earth would motivate him? Well, Jesus explained this. And this verse is known as the one key verse in all of Mark's gospel, sort of the capstone, the centerpiece of this entire gospel, Jesus said then and to us today, even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, his disciples often didn't really get Jesus, and maybe they were still hoping he was speaking in metaphor, and even when Jesus explained things literally, I'm sure they didn't want to think about him being killed and spit upon. So maybe they were just thinking in higher terms. They knew this term, son of man. They would have found that very comforting and encouraging. That was straight from the Old Testament. Daniel chapter 7, Jesus used this term 82 times in the Gospels to say, that's who he is. 
Daniel describes a king, one who sits at the right hand and whose kingdom of power and glory will never end. Jesus says, that's me. They can get behind that, right? We follow a king. But unlike a king who has servants waiting on his every need, Jesus says, I'm not that kind of king. Not to be served, but to serve. That explains where he was going and what he was doing. And that explains what St. Patrick came to be about as well. You heard he went back to England and he actually had some training. He trained to be a pastor and then a bishop, but he didn't look like the guy on the left. <laughs> That's from a stained glass window. Patrick, looking like a bishop, all regal, carrying the bishop's staff. And do you know what he's holding in the crook of his right arm? It's a church. It's a symbol of Patrick as a bishop caring for many churches. And he was such a good pastor, he was eventually entrusted with that. And bishops were often pretty comfortable. They didn't want for that much. And Patrick was willing to give all that up. And he likely looked a little bit more like the guy on the right as he went back to the very people who had enslaved him. You see, this verse Patrick himself read as a pastor preparing for Lent and Easter. These words happening right before Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. He would have read these words himself, but one word would have really gotten his attention. The word ransom. Now, ransom is something you pay kidnappers so that they will let their hostages go. Patrick, of course, he didn't have anybody pay his price to be freed from Milku and his enslavers. He actually escaped to the sea, but he was ransom. Later on, reading the Bible, and he's one of very few people in England who could read the Bible in Latin and who had a Bible to read. He would have read this word ransom, and it would have touched his heart because he knew that even though he'd been freed from his captors, he still was a slave and a hostage. Not to them, but like all of us, born a hostage to sin and death and the devil. And as Peter would write in his first letter, we were freed not with silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Patrick recognized that it wasn't leaving Ireland that set him truly free. It was the blood of Jesus Christ, our King, more precious than silver or gold, that paid his ransom price. Meaning that no matter where he was or what he was doing, whether he had freedom of movement or was stuck on a sheep farm, Patrick himself was truly free. But the people who enslaved him, they were not. Oh, they had the power, they had the control. They were scary, strong people, tribal chieftains. Um, how many of you have seen Braveheart? Show of hands. How many of you will admit seeing Braveheart? That, that's scary, right? Dangerous looking guys, fierce and feral. And Those were the type of people he was going back to. But without a sword, without a shield, without any armor, fearless. How on earth could you go back to people who had enslaved you? Think about that for a moment. If you've been a slave and abused for six years and gotten away, would you still have nightmares? Probably would. Would you have maybe a little PTSD about that experience? Possibly. And yet something set Patrick free enough to go back 
The Bible says perfect love drives out fear. And when your mind is set on Jesus Christ and not your circumstances, you can find yourself doing things in the power of God you would have never done before. Touched by Jesus and transformed by his strength, Patrick actually began to write poetry about God's protection. In fact, the second oldest hymn in our hymn book, it's under the chairs, is hymn 604. It's a, I bind unto myself today. The tune is terrible, but the words are awesome, and it's 1,600 years old. It's in the pew book, hymn 604. I actually pray a prayer. It's called St. Patrick's Breastplate about the protection, Patrick, and we have. I ran off ten copies of that for you. If you want, it's over by the suggestion box. Patrick, fearless in the power of Jesus, was able to face down these Celtic warlords and fierce people without a sword and shield and a formerly enslaved person going back, no armor, no weapons, facing them down. It must have blown their minds. But that's what it's like when you live not trying to be in control, but to serve. Not trying to be the the one who has it all, but the one who's actually willing to give all. It's called leading by serving. And Jesus said, whoever wants to be first must be last and the servant of all. That does mean you're not in control of your life and your schedule and your plans, but that does mean Jesus is. And I'd like to suggest that's even better. It does mean your life will be a little unpredictable, surprising. Yeah, when you follow Jesus, it'll be different. Get used to different. Patrick's life made a difference in time and for eternity. And he died on March 17th, 1500 years ago. And we still honor God's work through him, not because of Patrick, but because we see in him what a life dedicated to serve can be like. Zion is blessed by many people whose lives are impactful and have made a lasting difference. Young people, and by young I mean anyone my age and younger, (laughs) sit up and take notice. Around you are people who have loved Christ and led not by being in control, but by serving. Our world can and does lie to you, telling you that the path to happiness and fulfillment is in being in control of everything and having all the money and rep you want. That is a lie. Jesus said, and the Bible says, that lords and those who have authority, they They're here for just a short time, like a flower of the field. But the wind blows over it of time, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But for those who lead by serving, your lives will make a difference in time and for eternity. They'll be unpredictable lives, different lives. Get used to different. Like Patrick I encourage you to follow Jesus. Down the road less traveled, it will make all the difference. And all God's children said. In gratitude for Christ, we also give our first and best like Patrick so that others can know the surprising, different hope we have in him. If you're a ministry partner with us here at Zion, thank you for your sacrifice and service. If you're a guest with us today, please don't feel you need to put anything in the offering plate. But we do ask that you check in with us, share your personal information if you like. You can also volunteer with us using the QR code or by 
using the code in your bulletin. We'd love to plug in and connect with you. There are a lot of good things God is doing in our midst. For example, we are packing supplies for needy people in the United States and overseas this Saturday, right here, starting at 8. It's a great way to volunteer. Feel free to check it out. Students, everyone grades 6 through 12, we are also doing a service weekend in North Houston, April 5th and 6th. Talk to me now. We need to sign up now. It's a great experience. We have one more Wednesday Lenten service at 11 and 7 as we journey through the Lord's Prayer. Please also join us on Holy Week. We're coming up next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and then we have Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter services at 7 a.m. and again at 10 a.m., with the breakfast served by our youth in between. And immediately after that, we have a five-part story of the Jews on Tuesdays. You can hear about how things started in the Middle East. We have an essentials class for members and incoming interested new members starting April 7th at 9.30. And there are some amazing opportunities we want to let you know about now coming up in April Holly, can't wait to hear it. Thank you for sharing. All right, I got to put my glasses on <laughs> so I can see what I wrote <laughs> or typed. Okay, so um, Joyful Praise, the band, is hosting a worship experience night on April the 14th at 6 o'clock. And this night is full of music and scripture and prayers and praise. And so we are looking for members, you, um, that would like to share your story about how God has used you to help others, has provided for you in time of need, protected you from danger, or lifted you up during a difficult season in your life. So let me know or the church office, um, and we will work you into the program. Um, and also, we are doing prayer requests, and you can give those to me, where we can pray for things specifically um, for you that night. It's just, just a night of just praise and worship. And then also, something else I was going to talk to you about. Um, did you know that 90% of students attend public schools, and many of them have never heard of Jesus? Wow. We are excited that Zion has the opportunity to start a partnership with a group called Crossroads Kids Club. We'd like to start this program in the fall at Fisher Elementary and possibly at Teague. And we know that, there's, that there are many families who, they'll never come to church without knowing somebody that's here, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to go where they are mm. and bring the gospel to them. So this is a program that meets after school, and it's once a week. And you would commit about one and a half hour of your day um, in the afternoon once they've been released from school. Um, you can be a part of this, and so we're looking for people who are willing to take the Great Commission seriously and bring the good news of Jesus to children and their families. Uh, there will be a more informational meeting about it on April the 2nd um, at 6, and then there is a training for it um, with the Crossroads people um, that have been doing this for 25 years. Um, and we, Sagemont had done, or they, they do a good news club, and they go into the schools and do that, but I'm not sure that they have been active in doing that since COVID. And so uh, the Crossroads is really looking for a church that can be committed to start working this in the Pasadena schools. We won't be the only one, but we would be breaking the ground for it. They asked so, us first. Yes. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> yes, and yes. And if you just want to learn more, <clears throat> you can talk to Holly. You're not yes. committing, and we do need people to pray, and it's 1.52 hours a week. To connect children yes. to Jesus? Yes. Praise the Lord. That's it. That's not much. Thank you, Holly. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your leadership. And God's people said. Amen. That's pretty awesome. Thank you. Today we are lifting up all those who suffered because of the storms this past week. We're lifting up all the children going back to school after spring break and the opportunities we have to love and to serve them. We also rejoice with Jean and June Collins had their wedding Yesterday, two 80-year-olds, fantastic, the wedding of the century. Sorry, two 60-year-olds, sorry. <laughs> so these and others we lift up to the Lord. Please stand for a moment of silent prayer, and then we'll speak to the Lord together.
let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the gift of a, a new season as winter turns into spring, as the flowers start budding. Even in the midst of the pollen and the allergies, we, we thank you. Even in, in the storms and chaos caused by it in our broken world, we also see new life beginning. A perfect time to walk through Lent and the new life Jesus gives us on Easter and every day. Help us to live not in the winter of sin, but to live as we truly are, freed by the life and love of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Let us reflect his life and beauty to the world. Gracious Father, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you too for all those students and teachers and adults who've enjoyed a break during this spring. And now as they head back for one more push and focus, finishing out the school year, help them to finish strong, learn well, and continue to grow in wisdom and knowledge. Be with us as many of us prepare for a time of celebration. Senior celebration is coming up for so many. Some of our children are getting ready to move in new directions. Bless parents and children and families. Help them to grow in wisdom and knowledge and in their walk with you, dear Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Jesus, in just one week, we'll begin Holy Week, a time when we move from joy and celebration of Palm Sunday to the prayer and supper of Thursday, your crucifixion and death on Friday, and your resurrection triumph a week afterwards. Lord Jesus Christ, let us receive this time in humility and gratitude. And as we pray together and spend more time personally in our walk with you, change us more and more to reflect your love, your nature to our hurting and broken world. Not just students in school who haven't heard your name, but those around us who need to experience your grace through us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Jesus, you know those people who are hurting. And just like the blind man you healed on the way to Jerusalem so many years ago, we ask you to lay your healing touch upon all those we name in our hearts before you now, those who are named in our worship insert, those battling anxiety, depression, chronic pain or sickness, allergies or preparing for or recovering from surgery, Jesus, lay your hand upon those who need your healing. Heal them and give them an extra measure of your power and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, we thank you for all the servant leaders we have here at Zion and in our wider community. We pray for seminarian Michael Wilkie and Kylan Robbins preparing to be a Lutheran school teacher. We pray for those who are already in the ministry and local pastors who are serving or moving in new directions. For all our servant leaders in whom we see just a hint of the love and service of Jesus God, protect them and guide them and guard them. Like St. Patrick, let them show us by their example what it means to boldly follow Jesus into new places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Holy Spirit, we thank you for those times of celebration in our lives. The scriptures describe the life to come. One of the pictures it uses is the wedding feast of the Lamb, a time of celebration when all God's people come home with rejoicing. So the celebrations we have now, may they give us just a hint of the lasting joy that is to come and those celebrating weddings, anniversaries, birthdays, and more. Touch them, bless them, fill their hearts with joy overflowing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Lord, we lift all those we have named and all those we name in our hearts. 
trusting your good and gracious will for them and for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, we are privileged to gather around the table that he now sets and provides for us. His body broken, his blood shed for our forgiveness, our healing, and our life. Our servant who laid down his life so that we might be lifted up and healed. This meal is for those who share our faith that Jesus is truly present in, with, and under the bread and the wine. And if that's you, we invite you around the Lord's table to share this blessed gift with us. Even if you're not sure you should commune with us today, we do ask that you please share our unity in Jesus. Come forward as the ushers guide you. Fold your arms and you'll receive a blessing instead. Lord Jesus Christ, in the eating of your body and drinking of your blood, you lead us to remember your incarnation, your virgin birth, your youth in Nazareth, your ministry in Galilee, your choosing of the twelve, your healing of the sick, your raising of the dead, your entry into Jerusalem, your suffering in the garden, your death on the cross, your burial in the tomb, your resurrection from the grave, your ascension into heaven, and your return in glory. Strengthen us now with your true body and your true blood that we might live lives of purpose and meaning here in time and to your glory for all eternity. We pray this in your most precious name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and God's children said, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
please stand for prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank and praise you for the healing you give to us through your body and blood. We also ask for your healing for all those who need your touch and strength now. Bless our brothers and sisters who need you with them in this moment with your healing and your peace. And be with us now. Use us to be agents of your healing and peace for a hurting and broken world. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our servant and loving King, and all God's people said. Fed by Christ, we go to serve and love others in his name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Our final song for today is Blessed Be Your Name. We invite you to stick around afterwards and connect with someone you don't know in the name of Jesus. Jesus.